Hello, design enthusiasts. Welcome back to another enlightening episode of Rethinking UX, the Golden Circle Talk Show. I'm your host, Mayur Chaudhary, founder and advisor of Rethinking UX, India's largest design community. Today, we have a seasoned design leader gracing our platform. Please welcome Joy Banerjee. Uh, Joy is a head of design for ClearTrip, uh, India's most favored, most usable app in the travel industry. Uh, so welcome, uh, Joy. And uh, Joy's favorite quote is, people don't mind change as long as it is placed properly, right? So yeah. uh, so uh, yeah. we will enjoy the next 30 minutes talking to Joy. And uh, Joy, from your own words, who Joy is, from where you started, where you are, and how you have seen the industry shaping. So Thank over to you. So uh, I, thanks a lot for you. It's really wonderful to be here. Uh, I'm not a very <laughs> public kind of person, so I, it's probably one of the first few times that I'm doing it. Uh, <clears throat> where, who am I? <laughs> that's, that's a very, very deep question, but uh, let's just talk about design right now. So, yeah. Uh, I saw design literally from the advent of uh, internet. Uh, as the consumer internet uh, in India, mm -hmm. and that's it. Literally going back to around 93, 95, we were uh, 95 to be precise. Uh, it was very, very interesting uh, what was happening then. You know, uh, I still remember uh, using uh, uh, laser printers uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and those very little marks in my. Uh, so I'm, I'm from, uh, I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. You know, and you see all these uh, beautiful map yard and those very little tiny computers with uh, in, incredible one and in RAM, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and use the printers and, you know, so the PPP was coming in. So that was say, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you could imagine and you can print it. So that's where it started from and uh, look where we have come now. Uh, so my journey was uh, very entrepreneurial. Uh, uh, we weren't any big design houses per se. Uh, there were no design departments, uh, and uh, we just started a friend of my firm. I just started a design firm, which uh, I ran for around 20 odd years. Uh, it's still there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but in, in the middle, I've, I've done some consulting and uh, uh, invested in some firms and dabbled with all kinds of things. And now here I am, you know, uh, uh, heading design for an investing travel firm. Over the years, uh, I've done all kinds of design, and that's been my thing is to keep doing. And that's what being part of a agency it has a certain thing which yeah. you can't afford to. Uh, so from print to environment design to filmmaking, uh, uh, and recently, like the last few years, AI, machine learning, and going deep into an industry, so you know, healthcare. Uh, world e commerce, uh, travel, of course. You know, one of the first things was when travel uh, became uh, an OTA, right? So, yeah, a few workers was, I think, 1998. So, I did some consulting with them, and that's where the three day early book last year all came about. Uh, very interesting, and, and the way, uh, you know, uh, things would completely transform the world. Um, so, internet was there. It it really yeah. made such a big difference, and probably now we are into that again that big infection point where again artificial intelligence or machine learning becomes a consumer uh, consumer available and everybody can do anything with it. So that's yeah. the other thing. Um, talking about how the industry is shaped and talking more about travel. I think uh, my first you know uh, working with travel was around two thousand one. So, so Jay, before, yes. before we mm. move into the travel right. one, I have an mm. interesting uh, question for you. Right. So right. you founded a design agency and yes. and I think, uh, I don't remember anyone who has run a design agency for almost two decades, if I'm correct, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> almost, almost. Yeah. Right? I, yeah, I think it's more than that. Yes. Yeah. 20, yeah. 21 years, 21, 22 yeah. years. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how... Uh, how is that shift from being a founder, CEO, and whatever you can give a fancy like designation, right? Yeah. Uh, to being a head of design for Clear Trip uh, mm -hmm. and owning a function. Right. And uh, 
you have to also work around within the like organization cross functional uh, you right. have to win the trust and yeah. like everything else so, yes. so yes. how do you see that trust uh, how do you see that transformation uh, or the uh, journey from being the custodian owner of a company and then being part of a function yeah. where you have to also uh, build the bridge and the partnership across all the functions so anything on those front and for our audience i think it will mm. be a really good one because yeah uh, both the uh, both the industries if i may say they function differently the cliently are different when you are on uh, in the agency i think the mm. major client is your external customer but once yeah. you are a functional head in a organization you have an yeah. internal and external customer right so yes. more on those front and then we'll like jump into innovation right. and the travel so yes of course it's, it's a huge <laughs> for the jam in fact i typically have a much larger team where i was <laughs> running my own uh, how big was the team uh, so defend defended on various factors so i'm not the largest we had is around 60 or the others yeah Animators, designers, and really that went up and down uh, depending on projects and stuff. If you did. So, did you think when I just see Kota taking that to all this stuff? Mm-hmm. Did we ran for on an average around five years? Uh, so, we would build up things for that. Uh, and you're absolutely right. So, there the customer is external. And, um, and so, being in the team, uh, there is not so much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, work to be done, you know, in terms of, you know, telling people to do something, getting it done. Uh, here, it's obviously a lot of negotiation. Uh, it's interesting in the last one year, I mean, all my years have been like hands-on paper designer. So, you know, till 21, I would say, doing something every day. Yeah. Here, it's been like commenting on Figma files, <laughs> writing lots of emails, uh, getting into meetings in and out, uh, yeah. sometimes eight hours of meetings after meetings so uh yes that's a big big change and uh since it's not your all per se um so you have to take care of lots and lots of people at every level uh it's a very learning kind of an experience uh you know I mean, it does sound interesting or you know help design but uh, it's, it's a lot of challenge you know kind of it's really learning things for me also uh, one of the biggest things that you have to do, and you pointed out very correctly, is um, the relationships that uh, you need to build. Uh, on a slightly negative uh, sort of tone, I would say that it's across the world. A design team typically becomes a service uh, yeah. for the product time. Uh, and for me, I mean, that was not <laughs> So... <laughs> Uh, I needed to do something different. So I said, you know, just in the service means that there's really no creative need, there is no innovation need, uh, there's no really the kind of impact which I would want to have on the organization. So that's where I really wanted to shift at least or shape my uh, thing to this. Yep. And but it's a long process, but I think that's that's a that's a noble thing to do uh, for any design team to feel more mm-hmm. empowered. Uh, to yeah. have some say in the direction that you know, actually wants to take, uh, to have some say on the, the way the features are rolled out, uh, to have some say on, you know, I would say maybe it's a very big thing uh, that the designers or the design team for a, for a firm like ours or maybe yours, they are the conscious keepers of the company. Yeah. So, it's they are the ones who are, should be at least, uh, I mean, I know even entities are in Dutch life, so really they're the ones who should be talking to customers, really there. So, you know, they're the ones who bring a customer, give them the seat on the table. So it's, it's been a, but it's lots of negotiations, it's in lots and lots of, uh, what do you call this, collaboration, but basically, yeah. really lots of creation, which are possible. Yeah. So, uh. On the, on the same topic, if I want our audience to have top three takeaways right. uh, for a leader, for a manager in an organization where there are cross-functional dependencies, yes. what those top three items should be checked all the time the moment they come on board and then keep on doing those until they are in an organization? Right. Uh, let's see as a leader. Or mm-hmm. as a leader, I think 
one kind of musician that I really works very nicely on uh, design per se, per se is it's now called a servant leadership, but essentially you have to get uh, everybody in your team uh, from a D1, mm -hmm. uh, a leader or a manager, uh, to become leader themselves. Uh, which yeah. essentially means that all of them are really willing to collaborate. That's a bit of a problem when you see the uh, you know, sort of designers, they do have very strong opinions. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say the second piece would be to actually see it very rightly. And the way the design is shifting, uh, we need to have a lot of conviction and confidence in whatever we propose. Which yeah. means that uh, designers must, must rely on at least two things. One is user research. Get a new research team going or, or, or have a mental model or a mental, uh, you know, uh, inclination towards uh, research. Yeah. And so if you have a CX department in your organization, Make sure that you listen to the X files. Okay, that's why I'm ready to do that. Second and the last one I would say is have a very close eye on metrics. Uh, I know metrics and statistics and climate metrics, but not being able to talk numbers in an organization like this, you just really use it. So yeah. uh, <clears throat> I think those are the key things for me. Have a very strong focus on on leadership at ideal levels. Yeah. Understand users so that you can have a lot more confidence in your opinion and understand numbers. Uh, and I think a lot of people shy away from numbers, <laughs> but uh, they are the best at support. Yeah. And this is also like true for any of people manager, right? Uh, yes. Say, and these three pointers are bang on, but I think building the culture around it, that's also important, yeah. right? For us, right. because right. we can go back to our design team and say, okay, keep an eye on the numbers, but right. I think it just goes in the cloud, right? You need to have some right. kind of process initiative that we have been doing even in the past. Uh, right. But one thing which you also touched upon, right? Strong, strong conviction on your design, strong confidence on your like, design. Right. And that also comes with a appropriate documentation, right? Yes. It's, it's also your, the good documentation is also a Bible of your understanding, what you know about the product, what, is yeah. required what you have made and what is the expected outcome right that's where i also see many of mm. the professionals i'm not saying designers i'm saying professionals <laughs> they also lack and and now right. and the danger now is because of the ai right the entire process that we used to live by right. uh, it was anyway lean ux now i don't know what it is so yes. I think uh, those three pointers are like bang on. Let's move ahead. Innovation, which is talk of the town. Uh, we talk about AI and like whatnot. So innovation in travel app, right? Uh, given okay. it, your role in Clear Trip, right? A major player. Uh, how Clear Trip is evolving to satisfy the changing demands of the consumer? And uh, we have major two players, right? I won't name all of them. Uh, hmm. But uh, anything that you, your team or your organization is doing to stay ahead uh, hmm. in the curve, right? Uh, few things which you can call out and, and, and most importantly, what is the role of the design function, design and research function? Right. Right. Uh, so, uh, and as you would know, uh, uh, if you uh, so more, uh, yeah. it was kind of this is say, say, it was actually a fairly large, it's a fairly old brand, I think 17 odd years. Yep. And they did very, very well, but sometimes bad investments can make a company go down. So, um, over this city, it's a lot of people and from zero to live. Whatever, there is a fast. But, yeah. uh, this is created the, you know, version two, uh, and whole lot of things and, and things have happened. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things have moved on. So, uh, created. One is in its spirit, uh, has been very design like, uh, right to the beginning. So, one of the founders, English department, just like himself. So, there is that, uh, underlying understanding of design, which sort of percolates so, which is very, so, very good. Okay. So, starting to the CEO, I'm with everybody in the second the design is an important piece for us. So, that's the uh, which makes it all really easier. Uh, but again, this is like rework. Uh, of a brand and, and it's done phenomenally well in the last few years. 
We'll also meant that we have to redo the design team. Uh, we didn't have a research team, so we put together a team uh, in the last six months. So we do a lot of pre-adulation of every feature. Yeah, every feature. Yeah. We are good. Sorry. We are good. Yeah, yeah good. Okay. okay. So one is that. Secondly, uh, what we started doing was, uh, that I said, you know, I did one design to be a service uh, or uh, uh, right in the beginning, we started adding innovation as a, as a, as a whole, for every design, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter which is whatever you are. And it doesn't matter okay. what feature, how small a feature, how big a feature, uh, you have to, have to start thinking a bit. And so how can I deliver something really different? What can I yeah. actually deliver as a, as a, as an absolute delight or something which is interesting, whatever it is, innovation can be at so many different levels. Uh, so that's sort of became part of our culture. Uh, we also have something called, uh, uh, now we started something called low meetings Fridays. So I saw uh, things like in the meeting or offline, uh, came in and out of the eight. Uh, Fridays is when the entire thing comes together and we brainstorm on literally every color. Okay. So, uh, right? So, you know, so that is how we sort of work. Otherwise, you know, maybe we sort of lose back to the desk and, you know, pick up the products, pick up the features and box the product managers and be done with it. But at least one day when all of us come together, and now, of course, you know, there's a higher level of concert. So many times you don't even get to see each other in a cash. Yeah. So yeah. we started back uh, one, uh, as, as, a, as a ritual within the company. So that's a value. It's a lot of value. Then what we started doing, and that's very okay, okay. free, uh, is that in Slavon and Hatsby, doing these innovation features, and sometimes to large thing, we had a lot yeah. of these. And design engineering products. Otherwise, we're working on, you know, normal products, what we call as OPRs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not what we got. That's, and then we started doing at least one or two features, small, big, something different, uh, visually different, or maybe it's just a different idea. And yeah. every month, literally, we would go and present to the leadership team, you know, this is what you're talking about. And we didn't put any constraint on saying, you know, it doesn't matter when this is going to be picked up, but this is our idea. Something that, that can lead to other things like product and engineering. Yeah. Start thinking about marketing yeah. here, or planning. You start thinking about, okay, we could have done this. And yeah. this kind of, uh, it was literally like starting the pot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, just by doing this, I think a lot of uh, departments, a lot of people are a little bit more inspired. And, and, yeah. and, and now I see that actually you don't have to really do it so much that the ingredients are brought into that. Uh, innovation, and I think now we probably have one metric which is about innovation. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's another yeah. No, I think that's a that's a brilliant idea. Uh, design innovation at a designer's designer level, yeah, right? It's not a function. Is, yes. like, function. Yeah. It's not a function yeah. level. What I do with my teams, uh, and that has that I have been doing for the last eight years, if I am correct, uh, UX led initiatives. Right. Uh, but what I do is UX led initiatives before the start of a quarter. Uh, and these must be presented to the product owners to have good collaboration, to have their buy-in and then present because mm -hmm. even the product managers are human, right? They have a capacity to right. launch 10 or 20 right. product features, right? Yes, they are also yes. human. So why can't design as a function can assist them, right? And I personally believe when both of us uh, both of us started in 90s, like early 20s or like uh, very late 90s, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there used to be a thick wall between product management, design, research. Uh, now all those wall is gone, right? So gone, yeah. I think now it is even more important. But uh, great point, yeah. uh, Joy. Uh, tell us what needs to be done for these innovative features to get into a mainstream or uh, in the roadmap. Because mm -hmm. the complaint that every designer has is nobody listen, like, listens to us. Even mm -hmm. if we are showing them something, uh, no, there is no buying, right? So, mm. what is the mantra that you will give to our audience today? Mm. That what needs to be done one, two, three, four, so that when you are pitching your innovative ideas, someone will 
put in more emphasis on those ideas and say, okay, this is it, right? So anything, any mantra that you want to share with the audience? So the problem that you mentioned, it's a very real problem. Uh, yeah. And really, I find this secret so handle start and say, okay, you can do this and this is all right. Yeah. So the problem is going to stay, right? Uh, but the first thing, which at least, I mean, that is a learning for me also, uh, and we mean, I would say repair their relationship. Uh, the first people you want to be, uh, you know, on your side of the world, of course. Yep. Right? Uh, their job is not an easy job. Right? Yeah. So they have to put together so many things. They have to look at impact. They have to look at engineering. They have to look at features. Uh, if you've got a, you know, a backlog of 100 things to be done, they have to the back line and you have to, you know, push, push, push. Uh, so one very critical thing there is, uh, I think for people to really push uh, innovation, progressing may not happen on the first kick. Mm -hmm. But try and build more conviction, try and get more support. Uh, the product folks there can actually help out a lot in bringing that metric understanding. They can actually mm -hmm. help us build that case, right? Mm -hmm. So having them on your side is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, so. Again, relationship, get a good relationship going. And if you're fortunate, you know, uh, like I am, I'm going to meet the product head. <laughs> he's very really good friend. So, and, and have that initial experience straight going. It took some time. Uh, yeah. Same thing with other process managers uh, and product managers. Um, uh, we have to be more of evangelism from that perspective. So, what we all face to do is all the way to design presentations. A lot mm -hmm. of product managers tend to be either very tech centric, so they will come from a technology kind of designer or business centric. They have done an MBA yep. and stuff like that. So, let me understand those pieces. But the user centric, uh, that generalist, uh, they're yeah. hard to get. So, uh, I think it's our job to make sure they understand what we do. Uh, design is a big business now. Right? Yeah. People think design means what they see, that's about all, not how it works. Right. Yeah. And and why it needs to work the way it needs to work. So it needs a lot of uh, you know negotiation. And the way you negotiate also actually. So initially you used to I would say you know two size five, <laughs> and one little trick is to first is just uh, whatever it is. It, even if the entire proposition sounds complete, it's still but it's fine. But it's, it's a better you can actually get get than the entire your state send. Agree, wonderful. Let's just see how this will work. Now, there is another way of doing it. Do yeah. you think this will work? Then, if you have a user research team to actually validate some of your uh, cards, yeah. that makes it even better. Secondly, it's a long process. Uh, as and when your ideas flourish, you know, they start yeah. to impact and they start to connect, they will also trust you more. So, you have to build that trust. That's the only way to do it. Literally, there's no other. At least, haven't found. <laughs> and we yeah. and we call trust uh, quite loosely, but trust yeah. is a journey, right? It it it's doesn't happen journey. like this. Like this. Uh, I remember long back, I joined a company. I won't name a company, uh, and I was the third member as a head of design. Right. And three of us designers were working with around thirty-two product managers. Yeah. And you won't believe for one year I was fighting the battle, which yeah. now I can. Uh, I can admit that I was on the wrong side because it was more visual and less business. Right. And it made me learn that it has or more experience, less business. And I think that organization, that product team made me learn that it has to be, there has to be an optimum balance between both of them. Right. Yes. And yes. as long as you don't understand both the side. Right. Uh, and you also touched upon, right. Partnership Alliance. Right. Yeah. I have a six pager onboarding plan. Uh, and I keep on changing copy paste and changing whenever <laughs> I move from the company to company. Okay. I have one month, three months, six months, right? And if you are not able to bang uh, or hit the bullseye on those six mm. months, right? Then your right. journey is even more tougher. But right. I'll give credit to uh, Clear Trip because uh, Ayapan, right? Uh, mm. He is the CEO, right? He's a great right. guy. Yeah. I had an opportunity to work with him for a for a year. Uh, a good business guy, a good experience guy, yeah, and yeah. humble down to earth. He and yeah. a very good listener, right? Uh, yes. I used to meet him and he used to listen to all their coach. 
and then he used to come in right so and working with that those you know, like leaders it's also an opportunity and a delight right so no uh, great i think there are a lot uh, good takeaways from this section of like what we discussed let's let's move the hmm. uh, uh, track a little bit a rapid fire round uh, <laughs> android or ios joy uh i'm more on i'll be in a hand and it's going to be a little ones um yes it is i am but i'm not an android hater by the way so back to that fine and play i will cross android is a much bigger platform than i was expecting to say so but cosy yeah i tend to be part of that it was a film i worked yeah. close to 1780 the races in the same it's just all kind of stuff all, all things <laughs> yeah yeah which are the top 5 apps that you have on your iOS or Apple. Ah, oh, okay. So, okay, I'll first start with the uh, counter look. Uh, so there's an app called Hopper. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's it's quite a wonderful app. More from the point of view of Apple's, that say it's always designed with the way they do uh, predictions. Uh, okay. Pricing. It says among who they're actually accurate enough to run by eight or seven. Yep. So so they will be able to. Do Price selection tree, uh, whatever you're looking at, there are a lot of flights, and and there's okay, you know, this is a good time to focus, right? Or wait for a while and then you focus. So it's mm. a it's a wonderful tool, uh, and but we're going to do little fifteen hundred and this is a fair price. So I I quite quite enjoy uh, Hopper frankly. Uh, don't use it as more like you know getting inspiration for it. Then now uh, in terms of productivity tools. Um, I haven't used too much because again, we would use it as like viral sense or any whatever mm-hmm. the client uses. Uh, I actually went enjoying using Notion. Uh, I think there's one of those once you get into it, it's it's a little bit of a learning curve. But yeah. once you get into it, I think it's it's a quite an interesting uh, app. Then I didn't use Google uh, Podcasts quite a lot. Uh, uh, quite actually, I did. A uh, lot of native apps, which are Apple's, like Apple Health, yeah. uh, pretty fantastic apps actually. But here it depends on how many integrations are you. Yeah. yeah, on the surface of it, it's just that's that's really great. It still tells you a lot of information, but they're yeah. very very interesting apps. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing something. Oh yeah, there is uh, from pure design point of view. Uh, yeah, it's an app called. Uh, Most most skin, uh, most in studios, they make uh, very beautiful apps. If okay. You, if you really want to look at uh, beautiful looking apps, then most in are just quite a few of those. Most uh, skin. But otherwise, I have to actually hold my PC. <laughs> but I think these are four or five apps that are. Nowadays, it is uh, it is actually quite quite a tedious task to. How to refrain or restrict yourself not to install anything, and and right. we being in a in a field where we need to be updated and we need to keep doing R and Ds and mm. exploration, right? Uh, at least once we need to install something and see what it is happening, it right? Is, so I yeah. all, what was that? Uh, okay, anyway, uh, mm. no good. So are you a LinkedIn or a Twitter guy? So I'm not a Twitter guy. So okay. because LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm more for LinkedIn. I I feel a little better on it, uh, because I don't have to sift through too much. I typically get decent content uh, coming to me. But again, LinkedIn also has that its problems. So session visibility issues. Uh, and it's getting better. Uh, in fact, I forgot to mention because again, both of all of us are on Google Workspace. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, Google has its own little visibility issues, uh, but the kind of integrations they have done across. Yeah, I mean, they sell apps, mobile apps, yeah, etc. Yeah. It's it's very very interesting, and and just integrates your entire workspace as you can be working from anywhere in the world. So I'm mean, gonna have a cool experience of that. Uh, so that could be one thing. Yeah, you start use you start using Android, and like that experience will go uh, many fold up for sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You're right. But it's very interesting. Uh, I find Maps uh, on iPhone. Which is Google Maps better than I find it on Android. So uh, yeah. maybe, and that that even I have felt because, and that maybe primarily because of the check-in balance that 
yeah. that Apple puts in place, right? Do's yeah. and don'ts, right? Yes. Uh, no fishing. It has to be sleek and all those stuff. Yeah. Because I have seen, and many times I was surprised that this is working so flawlessly here. Why can't it work the same on Android, right? Uh, I used to be a uh, Apple guy for quite some time, okay. but at least uh, for last five years or four years, nice. at least I moved my phone to uh, Android. So right. I have iPad, I have AirPod, uh, which okay. I use <laughs> for both the places, but at least Android and like primary reason because anywhere where uh, I have been working and in India, right? Mm. Uh, all your soft, all your apps are from Google. Your customer right. is Android, so I yeah. think it made sense. But yeah, the ecosystem benefit, the usability, the yeah. design, the simplicity, I think unparalleled. Android is catching up, so right. hopefully it should be there. Uh, but I, I love the style of Android. <laughs> So that's I think, it, yeah. I think now they have a little edge yeah. with the uh, with these pixel with the Samsung yeah. coming up their flagships, right? I think the the one place where uh, I, I iPhone used to be a little at the top was mm. image video, yeah. and that is also like going uh, thin. Uh, let's come back to something mm. serious, right? For our right. audience, uh, success metrics, and this right. has been a uh, quite a topic, right? Nobody. T- touches or talks it in the social media because it's a it's a touchy one right uh without a goal any product task or product design task is like null and void right mm. uh generally the prd comes in then mm. the designer will take those prd they will design something uh l- let's talk about the success metrics being in the back of the mind of every designer irrespective of whatever they do uh i personally believe and feel and communicate to my team is making a product is a journey if you don't know the goal where to go uh, how will you define the path right uh, but most of the times the, as you said right numbers they mm. are even the they are black box many times even if the data is given to a designer right uh, the culture of building a design uh, a information led design right or data led mm. design uh, that it takes time to uh, build right so anything on those front and how do you and your team take care of those uh, data informed product design okay uh, yes so design being uh, quite complex and very integrated uh, and uh, yes it is the traditional uh, defined part uh, so uh, you can't you know get by in the center and but uh, what I found is there are of course two kinds of metrics. One is of course in business metrics, all the yeah. versions, etc. Uh, cost of acquisition, like and value, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And you have to be very conversant with those terms. But there is uh, another number, another set of metrics which are very user metrics. So I know there are frameworks. There is one double A triple R. There is also a metric called Heart. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is which is all about your know, happiness and engagement yeah. and acquisition and retention. Uh, all those five, tasks, yeah, yeah, tasks are sufficient. Those are all very very important. But the way they need to be looked at is, uh, very simply. Are you taking care of your customers, or mm-hmm. are you more bothered about uh the the top line? The top line yeah. actually typically means uh, top, top of the funnel, getting more users. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. if it does a one-time buy and goes away. Or uh, for a designer like this, for my perspective, that little mm-hmm. number, so I'm my small numbers, 5% mm-hmm. of my uh, users give me, for example, 20% of my business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like to focus on it. Uh, which means the metrics, the like retention, uh, engagement, uh, mm-hmm. you know, last users uh journal those things become very very important also if you're really talking about say contributory margins now Mm -hmm. the margin of a returning user now trying to actually get the first user also acquisition first time user for every user it's just set right it doesn't matter or if you make it half back next time and we'll be teaching that school say online channels or become the user of the platform there's no cost to acquire it. Mm-hmm. So, on a long-term basis, it's going to give you a lot more value. 
So yeah. my 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 uh, you know that that spread has to be at like one year, two years. So the year that I really need to look at is not the other, uh, not not really looking at monthly active or daily active, but I'm really looking at uh, a very long term priority. How many mm-hmm. people am I going to? How many people for the last last platform? Uh, how many uh, transactions are they making? Yeah. You see, am I really going to use those metrics? And how am I going to move those metrics? Those are yeah. the metrics. Those user metrics are something that we need to own. Uh, yeah. Then beyond this, there is a metric which is again uh, from CX. Now, they're getting very standard next to SAP and all that. But I think designers can actually create more fun there. Right? <laughs> and yeah. they just need to think they more. How can I actually understand customer delight? How can I understand <laughs> how we uh, understand their emotional ups and downs? So, in Creative, I started a new, uh, I won't say it's a metric, but a mapping of customers, and we call it mm-hmm. NTN. Uh, it's moments that matter. So okay. Actually, the little map customer journey uh, to mm-hmm. my platform to uh, certain moments, which are actually infection points, and we have now been able to map around nine stages and 14 different emotions. Uh, it's mm-hmm. really long time to actually do them but uh, so and my entire user research is uh, when it does uh, research intakes it starts looking at you know which touch point and what am I going to be looking for so beyond everything else that I do I should also capture the moments look at more because it's really good if you very frustrated angry happy neutral now neutral is not always there huh? uh, if you expected a slightly more abs- you know High quality action or something, or the light, and it's neutral, then it's a bad thing. If something's yeah. really mad, then it's just the customer said it's okay. It's just a good thing. So, yeah. uh, we could be getting into more moment design, we could be getting into more moments, and actually uh, doing some sort of an understanding. It's qualitative, it's okay. But, but we could also be doing some sort of a quantitative work on there. Uh, yeah. That's what it is. But I think user methods is something that the, the design should go. So when I uh, the one of the benefit for me hosting these uh, talk shows, right, is yeah. I get to learn a lot. One, second, I can also uh, connect the dot, the the evolution, right? Right. As a manager, as a leaders, we never used to talk these things five years back or maybe seven years back, right? Yeah. Are we used to be in the moment, in the silo, <laughs> do the work, give it to them, and then have a happy life right yeah and like, that's also good evolution right i'm not saying we are there where we have to be but at least th- we have taken few steps to reach mm-hmm. there where our the, where the organization wants us to be yeah uh, shifting the gear a little bit now and the, uh you have a keen interest in teaching that's what i have read yeah. somewhere if, yeah. I'm, if i'm correct right yes uh let's talk about the future of design education one second the newcomers who are uh, entering the industry, right? Anything that you want to uh, give as a again checklist for them? Mm. Watch out for one, two, three, right? Okay. And uh, why I'm asking is this is also an so this is two way journey. One, we expect something from them, and the and because I'm associated with many of the like universities design, they also ask us what we should do differently, right? So at least if those check mark. If you can give to the newcomers, it will also go back and align with the like in the, uh, schools and the right, right. universities, right? What and how it needs to be done. So uh, let me start from the beginning. Uh, when I started out designing, there were practically just few schools. It was like an idea, and it was a sign. Uh, even then, when I would speak to a lot of our visiting professors uh, they would say in China we partly heard of it so many schools <laughs> Brazil has so yeah. many schools and even Singapore has so many schools the US has just schools so one good thing is that I have even more schools uh, yeah. I would tell every designer whenever whatever I mean if a lot of people who are really not gone to design school but they've picked up skills uh, who generally mm-hmm. feel something they've been done engineering and you know, they've got into uh, design and they've become very accomplished uh, yeah. uh, there's nothing wrong with that frankly anybody can be a designer but yeah. uh, there is something to going to a design school it doesn't matter for how long you go 
what it does is it doesn't necessarily teach you skills, but it gives you a mode of thinking. It will teach you how to how design should be thought of. Okay. So, uh, try and go to a school. Whenever yeah. it doesn't matter. And nowadays, uh, there's so many beautiful schools, there's so many programs across the world. Just go ahead and do it and be with the schools. It doesn't matter what age. Be with it. Within a university, that will literally go back to the school. Maybe a few things or whatever. A fun is actually meeting there. <laughs> I don't know how much I can say that. I can move to say, you will see to all the students who have very unconstrained thinking. Uh, and yeah. that's what you get in a design school. The people you meet, the professor you meet, uh, the visiting uh, lecturers that you get. Absolutely fantastic. So that, that energy, you will not get inside a studio. Uh, in general, unless the studio itself is uh, that yeah. class. That's why. Uh, the other thing is, uh, with AI coming in, and this was never true, really. I will never tell you that you become a full shock or being a designer. If you yeah. are, you know, strong, mean that, uh, you can literally now go to a, a tool and say, you know, make me a designer and it'll do a reasonably good job. If it's doing a reasonably good job now, so within a year, it's going to do a fantastic job. What cannot be possibly all that, when I see the space for a designer, is the way you think about it. And yeah. how the human X technology, there's a huge role, even when AI comes in, is for designers to be thinking about how to use AI uh, mm -hmm. properly, like uh, ethically, properly, morally, yeah. uh, in the way it really, really uh, works the world. Last is, I would say, um, you don't know my own work, the designers are, everything in this world, in this creation is designed, something is designed well, <laughs> something is not so designed so well. Especially whatever human beings have created, uh, there's a lot of mess. <laughs> we we got uh, food systems, uh, uh, you know, and you will probably know 200 or million people uh, nutritionally or food deficient, whereas yes. there's enough food that gets thrown away. So yeah. a lot of our systems are really bad. Uh, so these are typically classified as wicked problems or super wicked yeah. problems. Yeah. And they need a lot of systems thinking. Uh, I think designers should think of uh, slightly larger problems than just fixing a little feature here and there. Uh, have that as back of the mind. Read a lot. Uh, yeah. He is supposed to be, uh, uh, this is a slide. It, it's a state. I need to learn a lot, to read a lot, have something that, you know, and, and read a lot, you know, go across the different departments. Yeah. This is one wonderful uh, uh, thing, which if you're a designer, you have to actually put it. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably not any other, I mean, I'm not putting down any other profession, but you know, you could earn a lot of money being something. But this one, you can earn a lot more than money. Yeah. And I think as designers, you should see yourselves as creators, have a large world view, um, and, and read, meet, <laughs> inside. Yeah, since I talked about travel, many, many years back, uh, I read this beautiful motto from this magazine called Life. Mm -hmm. It was an art to see the world, see the places of the poor, the reactions of the crowd, and it was wonderful. It is just see the world, to be struck in. I think that's a space, design, travel, you travel a lot, and go across, see what people in the world are doing. I think that's, that's what we do. It's a very, very fun practice. It says it's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think, yeah. It, it, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, that's Last one. Uh, that's what I would want to say. I mean, uh, it's just a profession that you can never stop me, you know, so you can never stop me. Yeah. I, I was, I was listening to your entire conversation, uh, entire pitch, right? And I think it boils down to two things. One, uh, it's the mindset that matters. Uh, it's not the tool, right? right. Uh, and the second experience, right? Go and earn yeah. experience. Uh, for many a times, uh, at least me and my wife, right? We have made a point that in a year, once or twice, go and visit some place, gain yeah. experience, because that's a good earning, right? Maybe it is the phases. You don't do it once you jump into the like industry. You do mm. it like hence like, much later. Right. But uh, great, I think it was great conversation, Joy. Yes. Uh, and uh, our audience must be having good takeaways from this half an hour or more than half an hour, like a conversation. Uh, so thanks for your time, Jay, and it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, let us know if you need anything from Rethinking UX community. 
we are always there to help anyone and everyone in the design and product community so thanks a lot uh, good night and it was pleasure talking to you thanks me you it was wonderful and what you doing rethinking uh your second as a wonderful initiative uh i wish you best uh i if i am looking forward to listening to many more people i don't know if whatever i said i said i hope something good it's so it's great it's great but uh, in yeah. today's in today's social media uh, era right i think the content uh, consumer has to be smarter than content producer Produce. right yeah. so if if there is no, a content put. and 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 there is a good content and i'm sure i have learned like many things i think people will find something so uh, thanks a lot thanks yeah. and good night yeah. bye i'll say it